let me let me say my philosophy now. It's much more now that I've tried the Uber put, the square put. I'm no good at that, and I'm no no good at saying something's going to fail. I'm much better at saying that I believe in a technology, like I believe in Tesla, like I believe in. Uh, Karmically, it's uh, better too. Karmically, yeah, it's better to bet on someone doing. It's well. better to bet on something to win because I think I think most people want things to win anyway. So I think the market has, as we've seen over the 30 years, or actually the 100 years of the S&P, whatever it is, 50 years of the S&P, I don't know how long it went, but it's, it's basically all up. You could have bought any time in the last 50 years, the worst time, the best time, yeah. it just didn't matter. Okay, so yeah. back to Enphase. So this is what I was thinking. I'm like 37 bucks. Enphase is a $5 billion company. If I really believe in Enphase, yeah. If I really do believe in Enphase, yeah. and it's not just a fly-by-night piece of shit, I should just buy right now whatever price it is right now. And it was 37 bucks when I was like thinking through that whole process over a couple of days. And I said, fuck it, I'm buying 100 shares. Okay, I bought 100 shares. Okay, that's not enough. It's not enough to be rich. I'm going to buy another 100 shares. Okay, one was in my IRA. The other was in my regular account. Okay, 200 shares. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm doing this, I'm getting an extra hundred shares on top of this. Yeah, do it. And I just bought the third hundred, the, the three hundred shares, and literally like the next day it went to forty, forty-two. I kept texting you. Now it's at fifty, and I still think, okay, even if it goes down, by the way, I'm not selling it. Like we were discussing trading, I am not trading this. It's a five billion dollar company. So for me, this is I'm going to end it. If I believe Enphase is going to do, I'm not saying it's going to be a Tesla, but if it's going to be a 20 to $50 billion play somewhere in that range and solar is getting bigger, which I think it is, I think I can make a lot more money than just making a couple of grand. That, that's my point. I'm going to keep Enphase. And if it actually dips below the 30 again, yeah. I'm going balls out Enphase. <laughs> okay, I, so. I, might, I might go in there with you. I might if go it goes with- anywhere below 30, it's balls out end phase. Okay, yeah, so there's another with- dip. Dude, it's, it's at least another 300 shares or 400 shares. Or five. I'm, I'm not even kidding because if I do believe, which I do believe end phase, I have him on my roof. Let me put it this way. I have him oh, on my roof. Yeah. Okay, I have an iPhone. I should have bought, a, when I bought the iPhone in 2008, I should have bought yeah. Apple stock. Yeah. I didn't. I have solar. I have end phase. Now I have their stock and I'm not getting rid of it. Bottom right. line. You know that Tesla's going to make a play for solar. Who do you think is going to go along with them? If the sector benefits. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who's going to go phase benefits. And phase benefits. And phase benefits. And so if you see Tesla on the rise and you know what they're doing and you know what their strategy is, I mean, you don't think the end phase guys are looking at what Tesla's doing? Of yeah. course. Every year in California, they say buy solar, buy solar because the tax credit's going away. And everyone rushes out and buys solar. And then the next year they go, you know what? It was so popular. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to keep it one more do year. it again. Or they cut it, you know, a little bit. So you, you know what? Uh, the other thing this uh, has, I think, putting a, uh, putting a light on some, some, some states, not every state. I'm sure the South is not doing this. <laughs> but California, New York, I think uh, renewables and energy will now make much more sense. Now that our environment actually did get cleaner during this yeah. pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And People clearly see having your own energy, actually, I think I've realized how important it is. I didn't realize before how important it is to have my own energy. I feel yeah. much more independent yeah. and not so dependent on the grid. What happens in 10 years when my loan is done? You don't what have happens? a bill. No, no, you don't I don't have, have any you know, bill. Yeah, in, re- in retirement, when you're starting to look towards retirement, you now do not have to pay for the power to be on in your house. And not at all. At a certain point, you know, you, you can also go and upgrade those panels. You know, you can upgrade those panels. And like, I was thinking like, man, would it make sense to like, this would have been a thing in like 2013. You put a bunch of solar panels on your roof and you just run a bunch of like NVIDIA cards and just Bitcoin mine. It, it shot up today. Holy shit. Bitcoin did. Yeah, it just went, it just went. It did, see, that's the thing. It doesn't give a shit. It just, oh, I want to go up. Yep. <laughs> There's no fucking rhyme. Someone decided to buy a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Who knows what happened? Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it is market manipulation. I'm sure a lot of it. It's only 100. The whole thing is less than Tesla, by the way. It's 150 billion or 200 billion, something right. very small. That's where the gains will come from because it's so small. That's well, exactly why. Moves. Yeah, there's a lot of moves that can be made and it still has so much room to grow. Well, imagine like in, in, in five years, a couple of hedge funds decide to pick up some Bitcoin, 
like right away that market cap will triple or quadruple. You know, it's still a possibility to run some Ethereum mining and some other coins too, um, if we're going to talk crypto. But on solar, and my plan is that, by the way, uh, I don't know if I have enough power to be running multiple rigs, maybe one or two. I still have to do some research on that for free. So whatever it generates would be free money. The reason why I, the reason why I want to do that is because I got pissed. For example, if you have too much money in the net metering account, at a certain point, it expires, which basically means they took your power, gave it to someone else. And well, where does it say money. that? I, I actually didn't look at my bill. Maybe that's look, true. Look it up. Know. Look it up. It might not actually be on your bill. They're not going to tell you that. Where, where did you see that? Is I, that a, when I was reading up on it, when I was reading up about how do I get my credits, you know, how do I get my credits? That's when I found out it's actually on your bill as part of the net metering. But well, it's automatically given to you when you use it, right? Like it is. Boom. It's there. It's at the bottom. It tells you how much you generate. Like yeah. right now, I'm generating. I hit fifty for the first time, which is nice. a big deal for me. I hit fifty kilowatt hours in a day the other day, and I'm using t about twenty six per day. So every day That's I'm good. generating. You doubled it. So I'm saying, you mean to tell me I'm generating all this power, I'm paying the company for these panels, I am not allowed to like, you know, bypass the net meter and plug it directly into my, my, my panel, but no, you're you going to take the money. And I said, you know what, this is bullshit. I'm going to find a way of, of, of squeezing money. I want to squeeze actual money out of that extra bit that I'm, I'm generating. And I said, I'm going to wait, I'm going to, I want to do a calculation this summer to see how many kilowatt hours I need right. to make because I don't want to pay in the winter. Well, Where and the good thing is now you know you had your bills from the winter. Yeah. You can take a look and figure it out what you use. Yeah. And yes, you have a right idea actually. That's did nobody talks about this benefit, but if you have solar and you have extra energy, yeah. You are literally printing money because yeah. now you could run maybe not a Bitcoin miner, I don't know if that'll get you anywhere, but an Ethereum miner. You could run something like that. Yeah. That's the thing with the Chinese why they're so rich with the bit with Bitcoin hashing and everything. Yeah. They, their power is almost nothing. It's almost free. If we right. had free power, which we technically are. That's what I'm saying. I was like, <laughs> I was like what would my mindset be if someone just said, you, you have infinite electricity? I would be like, well, then I would try to find a way of retiring off of my free electricity. What would I do? Right. I, would, I would throw computers into the, into the blockchain. That was the first thing that I thought of. But That's I'm a good one. Think, I'm trying to think of other ideas. The idea of not wasting energy, right? You have heat that you generate in the plate. When there's times when generating heat is a bad thing, like on your computer system, you don't right. want to generate heat. But for example, when it's the winter time and I have my computers running, I don't run. It that actually keeps thing. the right. It keeps it my actually, rooms warm. <laughs> yeah, it keeps the room warm. So like that, there's a benefit. But then, what do you do? What can you do with that? This energy that you're creating when yeah. you don't need it, right? Or or like. I was, I was trying to think about how I could use the extra power that I'm creating. Back in the day, I actually had like five, six machines. Remember? Yeah. Didn't I, I, give you I gave you money? I gave you, I gave you money for one of those rigs. The one where well, you that's all in, gone. The one I know. You took <laughs> the one where it went through the. That, Did you? This episode has gone south. Yeah. You, around my, you, you know, you give me, give me 20 shares of end phase. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, no, anyway, no. The, the reason I stopped, let me get to why I stopped if we're going to even have this in the episode, I was mining Bitcoin and I was mining Dogecoin and, and some other coin, Vert coin. And the reason I stopped is because I looked at my energy bill at the end of the month. It's not, you weren't making enough. No, I think I was, it was like over a hundred bucks just for the computers, just the computers. It's a lot. And Bitcoin back then was 600 bucks, by the way. So I was like, I'm making $20 to make, to spend a hundred dollars, like it yeah. sounds stupid. I'm, sp I'm, I'm spending a hundred to make. But that was real dumb in retrospect because I yeah. should have just been losing a hundred bucks for fucking five years. Generate the, yeah. Well, just, just I considered a yeah. cost, yeah. Yeah, expecting money. Bitcoin will hit $20,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, then all of a sudden, holy shit. It would have been insane if I would have kept that going for five years, but I didn't. I stopped because it was so expensive for the electricity at my house yeah. that I, I didn't have solar at that house, obviously. Now I have solar and now I can set up an Ethereum rig and it doesn't have to actually make me any profit in initially, but maybe 10 years from now, those it seven increased, Ethereums. Yeah. It just <laughs> increase your position without you having to throw liquid cash into it. It only, it seems impossible until someone does it. Right. I mean, that could be Tesla's freaking model. And it's right. like a lot of these things that seem impossible right now, like working from home, doing a, you know, doing a full on television show from home, without anyone touching anyone, filming with no contact. 
these things only seem impossible until you realize it's the only way to do it. Now we're figuring out all these right. things, sparking this like level of ingenuity that I hope we don't lose and get complacent again. And so that got me thinking about how can I just start to just have money generated from doing nothing or what, where am I wasting? That's not being. Yeah, no, there's a lot of money in solving yeah. problems. You solve a problem. There is a lot of. Tesla's solve. a good example of. Oh uh, <laughs> man! Oh man! So I don't know. How Apple's a good that. example of that, and and even Google and Microsoft. These are all they've solved very hard problems. When you solve very hard problems, you get rewarded, obviously, with possibly a trillion dollars. Right. Well, That's you what, get you get rewarded equal to the problem you solve. You know. Yeah. The Amazon. Oh, you know, like honestly, when Amazon first came out, I'm surprised. I'm shocked you just didn't buy it just as a long shot. Once again, we were dummies back when we were younger. I actually, but, I've, been, I've been boycotting Amazon Amazon for a while. I'm saying, forget the about the boycott from $9 to $2,400 would have been a nice ride. Oh you know? my God. Are you kidding? So, but my, my, my point being, Amazon did solve a problem that we thought didn't exist. We're like, oh, books. Initially when it was books. And I was buying books from Amazon, so I was actually using yeah. the service. Yeah. But then they started doing everything else, which is their whole plan the whole time. They, they never really hid that, by the way. Jeff, okay. Jeff Bezos never really hid that. Right. And apparently Walmart was not enough. We should have known, you know, like uh, even Walmart should have known and caught up on this thing they way before. Have, yeah, they should. They, they didn't take it. They didn't take them seriously. They didn't take them seriously. Some little bookstore in Seattle sending out some books. Needed to Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. Big and then mistake. what? Three, four years later, like when you saw Barnes and Nobles closing, that would have been the time. If you didn't buy them early, that would have been the time to go. Who's taking their business? Amazon, let me throw a couple grand in them. Right. And it, remember it, the upstart Netflix that took out Blockbuster when Blockbuster could have bought them for like maybe 50 million or some, something silly? My brother, I've been talking to him, and this is, uh, this is a company he bought. Now, this is Lionsgate. And uh, they're, they're pretty low right now. That is pretty low. And yeah, Lionsgate makes movies. What do people think? Lionsgate, Lionsgate will never make a movie movies. again? Lionsgate has a TV division. Lionsgate oh, look, they have a dividend yield. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm adding them right now. This is what I'm saying. I, I wanted to add them to the M1. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go heavy, but throw in like maybe 300 bucks into Lionsgate, it's 500 $7. bucks. It's $7.45. And what is the dividend yield? It's yeah. 4%. It's what, pretty good. That's, a, that's, I mean, that's almost 5%. I like it. That's not bad. So I was like, all right, you know what? Like, let me, I started looking at them like yesterday. You started looking at them to see what, you know, what are they doing? What are they on? Are you potential investor, blah, 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 keeping an eye. It might be time to enter the stock. You know, it's like they're at, they're at that price where, you know, whether it's, they're at that price to buy them. They're at seven bucks. They're well, not I mean, going anywhere. Well, when did they tank? Can you, can you go back to that chart? 14% of their shares are floated. They are shorted. Yeah. Shorted. Yeah. They have, um, 1.61 billion market cap. They're at seven bucks right now. This was the day's range. They're 52 week. They're at 16 bucks. So they're, they're set to double. They're set to double. If they, even if they just go back to what they were, this is what they were. Yeah, did, did, this, the the thing about a, this is the thing about a bear market that some industries, look, people are going to make films. We're going to watch movies. Maybe we, we, maybe we won't be at AMC watching them, but Lionsgate is not going away making movies. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. Um, and they also, they also have a Spanish language division. This company is suffering now because of what's happening as a result of- Well, because uh, they can't make movies right now. So right everybody's now. On, a, on a pause. Right. And so, yes, it might take some time for Lionsgate to recover. I'm not saying next week it'll be at 15 bucks, but- it seems like next year sometime it should be around 15 bucks again. I mean, yeah, because look, look at where they're at. I mean, for the most part, even into January, they, they have a, a, you know, it's a five. Uh, honestly, I, I'm going to buy it just because, first of all, I love movies. I make movies. Yeah. <laughs> but number two, it's perfect for my dividend yield portfolio because it's way down. It pays 5%. And I, I'm assuming they won't go bankrupt, of course. I, I got to take a little bit uh, further look yeah, at them. Yeah, we got to look at them a little bit more, but if you look- I, I want to see their financials a little bit that they can survive a year or so, but as long as they can survive a year, I'm going to buy at least $740, 100 shares, right? Yeah, so you can get, some, yeah, 100, yeah, 740 bucks, buy 100 shares, just say, okay, that's what I'm going to do. You know, it's also, it is, it, it's got a good dividend. And I started thinking- Well, like, that way I get a little bit of the dividend and I'm not risking a lot. And if it does well, great, it does well, but I'm getting that 5% for eternity. What I love about these stocks that are a low price and have a, a good dividend is if they're, say they pay you, say they pay you a buck per share, okay? Seven quarters, they paid for all of the shares that you bought. 
Wow. Well, like for example, Carnival, what was their dividend when it was down to oh, $7? Yeah. It's like 22%. Yeah. So if Carnival ended up paying you 20, like five years, it basically means five years, you're completely paid off on your Carnival. Another thing to throw in the mix, this was, um, this was, was this, which one's it? US Oil. USO. I well, was, I, uh, I think they did a reverse split. They, they did yeah, some they did a, reverse yeah, split they, did, they did a reverse split and they, they, yeah. They were at like two bucks and then they, right. you know. I think they what did they do, a, a six to one? I think it was seven to one or eight to one. I did invest in two oil stocks. Did yeah, you did. as well? So I bought DHT. I bought them for all of like one day, by the way. Like, it wasn't even, it's like Oh, you hours. got rid of it, yeah. Well, I got, okay, so I bought DHT. I don't know if you want to bring up DHT. Yeah. And I also bought uh, NAT, NAT. NAT, so These yeah. are oil tanker stocks because yeah. all... Because everybody's talking about how oil will have to be held somewhere, and they're making like bank right now. They went from twenty five thousand a day for like a, a giant oil tanker to like up to two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they raised the rates on the. It's kind of crazy. I don't even know who wants to store oil. Uh, someone storing oil that much? I think it's the Saudis trying to just mess with our whole system and trying to oh, totally ban bankrupt our uh, our yeah. oil companies. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. It's, it's, it seems like a total. That someone's fucking with us. This is the financial but, war where we're in the middle of right now. It is. Russia and Saudi Arabia are and now China. attacking oil companies yep. because they want to control the oil. That totally makes sense too. You know, you take advantage. So. Uh, I bought this company at uh, at eight bucks or something like that. Uh, I think it was like eight fifty. I'm sorry. So like right and around this, here. This was a couple of days ago, and okay. it went down maybe sixty bucks. And I was like, I hate this. I don't want to be involved. I oh, sold out and got rid of it. Now, now, so over here, I lost like sixty bucks. Go to uh, NAT. NAT at some point for me was up five hundred bucks. Okay. But I didn't sell it at 500. I should have just sold it right away. But that went up for me around 150, 200 dollars. And I was like, at the same time, I sold them basically within like 30 minutes of each other. And that went up to nine, almost nine bucks at one point. Where did it go? I was where buying you, it when. Where did you buy in? I bought it at seven inch, seven eighty, something like that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it seems like we both got it at the tail end of the upswing and would have had to sell it right away. So, oh, well, I did I sort of like when it, when it hit back around eight, I bought it at seven, oh, 760. I'm sorry, 760. Yeah. It went up to almost nine and I should have just dumped it yeah. then because it beat my 25%. Yeah. Turn, I said to you, but I was like, oh, I'm going to get more money. Oh, oh, get more sure, money. Sure, sure. <laughs> money, 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 money. Yeah. So yeah. But when it hit, when it hit eight again, yeah. I said, I'm out and I made like 200 bucks, something like I mean, that. I know. So, so in retro, it, I made around a hundred dollars on oil that's right. I know. It's, like, it's so ridiculous i know because you're like i'd have to put like ten thousand to really but you don't believe in this uh, company this is just something no 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 i was trying, trying to do a swing trade yeah. and then i and i was like and then when i the more i was thinking about it i was like i don't know anything about this <laughs> i don't know like i understand like if i buy tesla even at 800 i'm not going to feel very sad if it goes down to seven six hundred because i feel like it'll be way more in the future I have no idea if Nordic American tankers LTD. I don't know what they're gonna do in, in 10 I don't seconds. Know. I don't know. How, year. I don't know how you have any money <laughs> <laughs> with some of the shit that you do. No, that's actually not a bad price. So 33. So I bought it at thirty dollars and fifty cents, and literally five seconds later, it tanked to twenty eight dollars and fifty cents. Oh, uh, you're like motherfucker. No, no, but well, I I wasn't treating it like a short term thing. That's the thing. So I, now, now I'm making much more plays where if I get have to keep it, I'm okay with keeping it because I had Twitter all the way up to, and I was selling at 36, 30, 38. I sold around that price too. I sold all of it by at around 36, most of it. Okay. Yeah. So now I had no Twitter and it went down all the way to 20 and I didn't pick it up and went to 30. I'm like, all right, well, Twitter's not going away. Obviously yeah. I right. use Twitter every day. So I'm yeah. like, all right, let me just pick it up before it goes over 30 and then immediately dumped. And I was like, all right, that's not bad. I wish it dumps to back to 20 because then I'll just buy a custom more Twitter. But no, yeah. now it's at 33. So I'm up on Twitter. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's good. Um, uh, once again, I'm not thrilled about, you know, when you start a position yeah. again, you're not thrilled when it goes up on okay. you. I know. It doesn't make you happy that you're 100, 200 shares because honestly, that's not going to make any of us rich. I know. We, we, we might be okay and we, we're going to be able to afford restaurants in a year <laughs> when we're back in restaurants. Right. But I think the objective is to become financially free. I think that's the objective. 
I know. It, it, the thing is, it's a balance between trying to <laughs> trying to take advantage of the different options that are out there, but also making right. big, big plays. Like you really, at the end of the day, you can invest as much as you want, but every time you make a trade or every time you buy in, you're risking failing. It's like if you if you've ever played roulette. If you yes. go to the if you go to the, yeah. the yeah. go to the roulette table. I love roulette. Every every I love, <laughs> I love it. But every time it's you sit fun. at the table, every time it spins it's a chance for you to lose. So right. if, you, but if, if you bet big, those are less bets that you have to make. They're more risky, but they're mm -hmm. less bets that you have to make. You're Are a gambler at heart like me. Yeah. Me We're too. Gamblers. I mean, I, listen, I, I love Vegas. I, I listen, love it more I, than I, I bought oil. I bought, I bought oil tanker stocks. I'm obviously a gambler. <laughs> you know what I think it is? I, I, I think it is. I think it's, I think what we're seeing now is we're reaching that point where like investors just want to invest. It's like a oh, yeah. Drug. Well, it's, like it, is, it is a game. It is fun. But yeah, but you're I, not I, getting the fix of like, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? It's like, you're not getting that. You're yeah, not getting the action. No, no, no. Look, look, look. We do want the action. But when I invested in something totally foreign to me, like those oil tanker things, I felt uneasy, really uneasy. <laughs> like I had to, I had to get out, like, because I was watching it second by second. Right. No, I, I don't have to watch Tesla second by second. I don't have to too. watch even Twitter second by second. I don't have to watch end phase second by second because I feel I know what they are. You know, right. I know what they are. I know what I invested. And I think in the future, it'll be worth more. Those are what those are things what, I have no idea. <laughs> but that's what limit orders are for, my friend. That's why no, when I, I buy these like, you know, I, stocks. I don't I'm really like, like limit I'm, orders. I don't like uh, limit orders. I don't like limit orders because let's say it dumps 10% and I'm like, I'm out if it goes down 10%. That could just be a little blip in the whole thing. And then I'm completely out of my position. I'm, I'm looking at it now where... When I buy one of these like little speculative stocks, like like with Uber, Lyft, you know the yeah. big ones like the Teslas, or even like I have some like I have some like like UFO hat. Oh yeah, like if your carnival if your carnival hits thirty, you're out. <laughs> no, if my carnival hits thirty because it, it was historically sixty, that that's another one of my long. I'm looking at that as like a long term play. Okay. But for these like speculative shit like NAT or that other one D D H T whatever, DHT, I'm like. Yeah. I'm a, if I put a thousand bucks in, I want to walk away with twelve fifty. When I have that, I'm done. That's like that's that that is the way that you're not considered a bad gambler. A bad gambler doesn't know when to stop. Right. I'm so a bad gambler. As much as like <laughs> cutting my losses on the top, I'm also cutting my losses on the bottom. I'm like, if it drops, say fifteen percent from what I bought it, just fucking sell it. I'll take the money and I'll put it somewhere else. If it goes up twenty five percent, sell it. And then I don't have to think about it anymore. So I oh, yeah. So you're talking about like, the, the difference between trading and investing. So certain stocks, you're right. You only yeah. trade. Yeah. So when I made the 150 bucks on Nat, that was a trade for me. I had yeah. no inclination of keeping that longer than like maybe a day. Right. right. Like I was terrified to even hold on to that. Shit. Yeah. No, I know. I'm with, you. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I Because I bought them and I'm like, I don't really know about this company. And like, you know, but... At the same time, it's like, this is something right. that you know is going to go up and it's going to go up relatively. It's like the smile direct when Phil was like, buy it. I fucking threw a bunch of money in there and two days later did a limit order and I, it tanked. Phil. Wait, you didn't sell? I did. So you made some money. Yeah, right. I made money. But Good. I fucking Good. set my limit too low. I bought it at like four and change or five bucks yeah. and I set a limit at like 615. Phil put his at like seven and fifty or something, and it hit seven fifty in aftermarket trading. So in the pre mm. the pre ramp up to the market opening at like eight fifteen, it hit it hit like seven fifty for like a second. So he he got out of it though, and right? he got out at seven fifty, and I'm like, fuck you. So when the market no opened, no no, no. Day, I, I think well, first of all, damn, you made money on a shitty company. Congratulations. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying, but that's good. Forget about the 750. Like you actually walked away from a crappy company. Just a good trade though. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, just took yeah. some money because I knew that it was going to happen. That's but still like 15%. Like, that was still it's like 15%. Not bad. It's, it's yeah. not bad. And it was, I don't know. I didn't put it there. I mean, imagine, okay. Just imagine if we were smart enough to make 15% every day. You don't right. have time to actually do that. No, but, but, but I think, what, I think you're a swing trader. You're a swing trader. Let's put it this way. My strategy now is partially because of how the market is and also partially for like my time, because it's like, I, I made the mistake. I bought, I bought Sirius X, Sirius satellite radio. It was like one of my right. first stocks for like $2. And then I bought XM for like three bucks and we just kept dumping money in there. And at one point XM was like $38 or something. It was just, this insane. And I was just so happy that I made all this money. And right. then by the time I got around to selling it, I 
might have broken even because I didn't oh, know really? when to get, really? I didn't know when to get out. In other words, I'm as an investor, I'm always thinking about I got to get in, I got to get the lowest price. Gotta get yeah, the yeah, yeah. Price. I, I think you're right. And well, when do I, you get out? You got to know when your point is to get well, out. Well, no, it goes to your point. What? Okay, the fact that it goes back to Tesla that I feel bad that I sold my shares, even though I have made a reasonable amount of cash that has paid for Enphase, has paid yeah. for Twitter, has paid yeah. for other companies that I'm actually cur currently buying. Thanks yeah. to thanks to Tesla, by the way. Yeah. So maybe I should not return to that well, keep my shares that have paid for themselves, and I have a good stake still. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't return and buy it at five six hundred again. Leave it alone. Me, me and and buy the new oh. the new player exactly this is what i'm starting to think about because we were waiting like right now if we stuck to the strategy from march you'd be holding on waiting for tesla to go down and all these stocks are going up and down by you it's this idea of i want to be rich but I, it's kind of arrogant to say i want to be rich but i want to be rich the exact rich. way that i want <laughs> No, I'm, no, but no, 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 I, I see what you're saying, right? Well, 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 like, and that's what happened. As Tesla care. was going up, I said, okay, I can't keep waiting. So I went and made some plays. And yeah. thank God I did because mm -hmm. those plays, at least at this point, are working out. Mm -hmm. I would rather... And I cut my losses. The Uber thing, I just said, you know, Uber's not going back to 20 anytime soon, at least. Right. And I'm going to lose this thousand bucks completely. Let me just take out 350 bucks at least. And dump it into something else. And dump it into something else. So this this whole experience, these last couple of months, have taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. I've learned so much, and I've also yeah. I've also yeah, adjusted my strategy. I've also just like yeah. to adjust my strategy. And what I'm saying is, it is not about like I love Tesla, but if I don't make my my return on them, and I make it on some other company, I only care about the money that's in my account. Yeah, no, that, that's true. I actually don't care where the return comes from. Right. It's only I feel like Tesla's a, a almost a guaranteed return. That's the only thing. It's guaranteed, so, but you're in. But you're already in. I'm already so, in. Honestly, if I hold it till five thousand bucks. I'm probably buying a house with that money. So I'm going to do okay. Nobody, nobody cry for me, but I wanted to buy a mansion. <laughs> I, I know. To, I, I know. wanted a 20 room. <laughs> I know, but, but you know what I feel? I feel like it's a combination of buying good, solid companies with solid financials, but it's also, right. I mean, would you have put five grand into American airlines on October, 2002? Probably not. Because it was 26 cents. Oh, uh, after 2001? Because it was 20. You know what? Uh, I wasn't, obviously, the fact that we didn't buy Amazon and all these other companies that were out back then, Google, yeah. right? The fact that we didn't buy, we obviously did not know enough. I think right now, the me currently, yeah, well, definitely. The, yes, the you currently, yes. the you, the you currently. The me back then didn't know shit, honestly. But are you buying stocks? Are you buying? Really, I'm buying every, I'm buying really every cheap. two days. You know what I'm saying? Like, in other words. Well, well, the thing is, it's not cheap enough anymore. It's all gone back up. I know. Well, they're Every all two up. days, I am buying either for the dividend portfolio or if I see an opportunity. Like, I did see an Emphase opportunity. I saw a Twitter opportunity. Right. I'm buying that. I and even up. Uber at 30 bucks, I'm still thinking, is that an opportunity? We want to take that winning to, like, the top. We just want to, yeah. we want to cash out with a good life. Let's, let's put it this way. We're gamblers. I mean. <laughs>